Good day, everyone, and welcome to Telling Your Story in Various Ways uh, on the GiveCloud platform presented by Keisha Simpson. Uh, just a little background on Keisha. In 2018, uh, she and her sister, Tegan, founded an Instagram movement, uh, Live Life Unfiltered, which aimed to spread the awareness on how social media affects young women's mental health. Later that fall, the sisters launched the As She Is Instagram campaign, which encouraged young women to share their unfiltered stories on social media. The As She Is Challenge reached well over 100 million people. That's an astonishing number. With participants from more than 60 different countries, celebrities, Olympians, activists, community leaders all joined in to show their support and acknowledge that being real and unfiltered is crucial to our mental well being. Keisha is also recipient of Canada's Top 25 Women of Influence Award. Um, so, Keisha comes with a tremendous background in terms of digital capability and, and getting your story out. Uh, we are really looking forward to hearing some background, um, uh, both on the movement as well as uh, the GiveCloud toolset and how you can end up using that to tell your story and um, sh uh, use some of the features to keep your donors engaged. Um, just a reminder for all of you, uh, before I hand this session over to Keisha, I'd like to remind you that um, to add your questions to the Q&A tab uh, so that we all can see them and answer them at the end of the presentation. Anything in the general chat may not get answered just because of the scroll of the screen, so we'd appreciate that. And at this time, I would like to turn it over to Keisha. Thanks, Daryl. So today we're talking about storytelling and the impact that it can have on fundraising. We have 30 minutes together, so we're going to use the first half of this se session to really dissect what makes a powerful story. And then the second half, we're going to look at different tools that can enable you to turn your storytelling efforts into dollars for your mission. And then lastly, we actually have a quick announcement from our CEO, Josh Bloomfield. Before we dive in though, we do have a, a quick video that I wanna show you. So it's a really good example of how you can use nonprofit storytelling uh, to really make an impact. So this video that we're about to watch um, is from the organization called The Girl Effect. I'm sure a few of us have heard of them before. So they were founded in 2008 and they use the media to unlock the power of the girl. The first time I watched this video, I think I actually literally got the chills because they did such a good job at storytelling and really pulling me in. Um, so again, it's a really good example of how impactful stories can be in the nonprofit space. So without any further ado, I'll press play. Thank you. 
So I hope people liked that. But let's dive in now and look at storytelling in more detail. So what exactly is nonprofit storytelling? Storytelling is an art and it's an ongoing process and a skill that you can develop, but it's not actually that complicated to learn. So storytelling is an innate part of what makes us human and bringing this humanness to your nonprofit is what storytelling is all about. So what exactly does make a compelling story? So whether we're trying to get our toddlers in bed on time or you wanna get your supporters to make a donation, every compelling story actually has a few similar elements, characters, conflict, resolution, and it follows a similar plot outline. And we actually saw all of these different elements in the Girl Effect video. So why does storytelling work? In today's digital world, stories can be a compelling avenue to helping you build relationships with your supporters, and it can be a powerful way to help you humanize your charity. For example, sharing your founder's story can help you humanize your nonprofit and make it easier for your supporters to connect with their mission. The second reason is it helps you create contacts or simplify abstract concepts. So often the mission of your organization includes complex issues or solving problems that many of us have actually not experienced in our own lives. For example, trafficking, extreme lack of basic human needs, or even complex science-based issues. So a really good example of this would be the Nature Conservancy. So just the name itself, Nature Conservancy, sounds complex, cold, and frankly is a little hard to pronounce, <laughs> practice a few times. Um, but when they added in the coral, the, the tagline, the coral nursery, it helped soften the brand, conjured up thoughts around babies, and ultimately made it easier to identify with. Storytelling can also help you uh, educate your audience. So organizational psychologist Peg Newhoser found that learning when done through a st uh, compelling story is a far more effective approach of educating than simply sharing facts and figures, which intuitively does make sense. So when we deliver examples or teach through storytelling, supporters are actually going to remember far more accurately and for far longer. Lastly, storytelling creates heart-to-heart -heart connection. So we'd like to think that our buying or donating decisions are based on rational analysis. But in reality, emotions are greatly influencing our choices. So studies show emotional response has significantly more influence than when we are provided just with information. And probably the best example of this is gonna be the identifiable victim effect. So the identifiable victim effect shows that the story of one victim tends to be far more powerful than hearing about the tragedy of an entire group. Why? Because when we learn the identity of one victim, even just like their name, photo, and a brief description of who they are, we're going to have a deeper emotional connection than when we hear about the suffering of an entire group of people. Yet, this is actually counterintuitive. Rationally, it makes more sense that we'd be more motivated to help 100 people than we would to be to help just one person. Um, but in reality, in most cases, this actually isn't the case. So once you've told a powerful story and you've captured the attention of your supporters, we're going to want to make sure that you're able to turn that attention into retention. So GiftCloud has simple online experiences that can help you transform these connections you've made into fundraising dollars that can make an impact. So while we do have quite a few features that can enable storytelling like peer-to-peer, text-to-give, memberships, or our online store, I do just wanna spend five minutes looking at two of our features. What is important to know here is that GiftCloud was actually founded as an add-on to DonorPerfect. So we were created over 10 years ago specifically for DonorPerfect. Um, and as a result, this really needs two things. One, our, our integration with DonorPerfect is in real time, meaning the moment a transaction occurs on GiftCloud, all of that data will be pushed over into DonorPerfect. And two, our integration is best in class and you're able to customize it. Um, so no matter how you use DonorPerfect, you're really able to go into the back end of GiftCloud and customize integration and setup. So it works with the way that you're currently using DonorPerfect. As a result, 
what we see is that six months after um, signing up with gift cloud uh, on average 72 percent of donor perfect organized donor perfect organizations online fundraising will increase by 72 percent um, so again like six months after you add us we should see an average increase in online fundraising going up by 72 percent so i'm going to hop over here and show you uh show you a little bit of what it would look like if you set up gift cloud with your organization so this is my charity live life unfiltered and i'm gonna go quickly here because we don't have too much time but i want to show you just how a few of our solutions would work so we have our donation page you have the ability to dedicate your donations come over here to fundraisers this is a peer-to-peer -peer site online store, view a product. We have upsell features, promo codes and checkout. But what I really would like to show you today, um, because it really does relate to storytelling, is our donor portal. So the way that I've set this up is I can actually have my donors hit hidden or secure content that otherwise they would not be able to see. So when the donors log in, they're able to see this page, which was uh, built with our website builder. So we do have a website builder and I've just taken one of the templates and I've customized it um, with gift cards, uh, with some of Live Life and Filters kind of photos and brandings and colors. So I'm able to tell my supporters about the As She Is campaign that occurred last year and how successful it was. And they would only see this page when they logged in. Otherwise, they don't have access to it. And you are able to create different pages or different experiences for different groups of donors, which will allow you to customize the storytelling experience. And then once they get past the landing page of their portal, they're able to go to the... Oh, So they're able to go to their home uh, profile of their donor portal where they're able to manage their entire experience. So everything that GiftCloud does, every page, every field, every click was, um, was designed intentionally to help you maximize your relationships with your donors. And right from the portal, I'm able to, as a supporter, manage all of my own information. So I can change my billing address on file, which will automatically update Donor Perfect's record. I can download a tax receipt, so I don't have to call you. I can manage this all from my back end. I can change a reoccurring payment or change my payment method. If I was running peer-to-peer -peer campaigns, I'd also be able to manage this all right from my back end. Then the second feature I would like to show you as well today um, is our events and registration. So this page was also built with GiftCloud's website builder. It's a template that I drag and dropped. And I customized it with my information. But when I click add a ticket, I am able to, I'm able to buy a ticket for the event. Now you can customize this setup so that um, you can buy a ticket and make a donation in one checkout experience, or I could buy a ticket and pick out my t-shirt size all in one checkout experience. But in this example, I am just choosing my ticket. I can pick different options of um, ticket levels. If you want to have multi-currencies, you can do that. You can have as many custom fields here as you would like. And then when I purchase the ticket, I will actually receive an automated email uh, thanking me for my purchase, giving me information about the upcoming event with my tax receipt, as well as a QR code, which I can then use to get scanned into the event, which will allow you to easily kind of check people in and be able to, tra uh, to, to track and report um, who has come to your event. So that about wraps up my side of things. Um, but before we go, we do have an exciting announcement from our CEO, Josh Bloomfield. So he wasn't able to be here with us today, but he did record a video um, to give you a sneak peek into what's coming with GiftCloud and how you can fundraise like it's 2099 with DonorPerfect. 
So without any further ado. Thanks, Keisha. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Daryl. And hey, everyone. I'm Josh, CEO and founder here at GiveCloud. I'm so sorry I couldn't join you in person today. But listen, I want you to recall the last time you donated online. In fact, I bet I can recall the experience for you. It wasn't memorable. It was an online payment. You filled out a bunch of form fields. You clicked submit. Probably got a confirmation email of some kind. And do you remember how much you gave? I know you remember one thing. You remember why you gave. There was a story. Story somewhere on social media or through the grapevine about a struggling family, a hungry child, a suffering animal, or neglected community. What if a fundraising experience could make you part of that story? What if a donation form felt like you were having an impact instead of just processing a payment? Let me show you an example of what I mean. During COVID, our local Christmas toy drive, who usually collect toys in person, was unable to collect physical toy donations. In 2020, they launched a traditional lackluster donation form and collected a couple of hundred dollars. But in December 2021, they tried a new approach. They ditched their stale donation form and used GiveCloud's patented new donation form. Instead of focusing on money, the toy drive chose to focus on impact, on the story. What you are seeing are how many toys I want to provide for a child at Christmas. At the top, you're seeing who else is giving in real time. But as I swipe, I'm able to reveal higher levels of impact. What was remarkable is how many people immediately swiped to the most amount of impact they could have. The average donation soared and the toy drive exceeded their fundraising goal by three times. It's not just the focus on story and impact that impacted their fundraising. From that social proof you saw that creates that little bit of FOMO, that fear of missing out, to subtle animations and transitions, to the lightning fast checkout, which by the way, if you haven't noticed, I haven't had to fill out a single form field yet to upsells and upgrades, to opt-ins, and social fundraisers focused on impact that are ready to share with your friends and family instantly. It all adds up to more dollars for your cause. We believe that when a donor loves the giving experience, they'll give more, they'll give faster, they'll give more frequently, and they'll tell their friends about it. And this same technology is available in multiple languages, currencies, and templates. This template brings all the elements from that previous example into a traditional appeal with a strong transparency promise that connects to both the intellect and the heart and trust of your donor. And all of this is fully embeddable in your website with no redirects. I love this quote. Good brands are transactional. Great brands are emotional. And a great cause is one you feel an emotional connection to. And GiveCloud is the only tool built to connect your story to the hearts and wallets of your supporters, setting you up for long-term recurring support for your cause at any scale. Pair your story with GiveCloud and reliably turn attention into retention. I believe Keisha and Sarah will share a bit more, but I've authorized them both to give you all early access to these forms fully integrated with DonorPerfect today. Thank you all for being here. This is the first conference I've missed in many, many years. We've been a partner with DonorPerfect for 10 years now, longer than any other fundraising partner. And it feels strange not being there. Hey, Daryl, great, uh, great job hosting. Uh, and thank you, Sarah and Keisha, for holding down the fort. Happy fundraising, all. Josh undoubtedly brings so much energy to all of these. <laughs> Miss him. So that um, about
wraps things up on our end. So as Josh said, we will be giving everyone on this call early access to these features. So I believe Sarah has dropped in the chat uh, a link where you're able to get early access or you can drop into the lounge and we'll be able to set you up. Um, but otherwise we are here to answer any questions. So um, Keisha, one of the questions that came across, um, Ben was asking, love the idea of donor portal. Clar to clarify, do only give cloud forms connect directly to the portal, not DP online forms? And is the download process for donations through give cloud only automatic or is there a manual option? So certainly I can ask the, the early part of it. The DP forms um, do not provide uh, portal functionality. That is something that is relatively exclusive to um, the give cloud integration. And then as far as the download processes, um, what what options are available there? I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious as to whether or not the the gifts do they download automatically to give uh, from Give Cloud to Donor Perfect only, or is there an option to do it manually? You can have them hit a queue, and then if you, so, if you wanted to, you could set it up so all the gifts will hit a queue, and you can go through them separately. Got it. Got it. Great. Great. Um, well, there's there's certainly two pieces of content here that I'd like to draw some connection with. And Keisha, you shared an amazing story at the very beginning of this. The story was told through video and so forth. But one of the things that I wanted to sort of tease out of this is GiveCloud has been at the forefront of uh, what I'm going to call digital experience. Because uh, the if your experience, if you've if you've watched a great story. And you're about to give, but then, you know, things are a little bit clunky or whatever in terms of your gift process. I mean, that ends up having a negative impact on the positivity that the story ended up giving. And, and I think, um, Keisha or Sarah, if any of you can share a little bit about um, your just the give cloud mindset in terms of um, easing the process to give. Uh, you know, what are what are some of the things that you've heard from your clients that uh, that you could maybe share in terms of just how impactful that has been? You've quoted one statistic, it being the 72 percent growth in online giving. Um, but I'm sure you've also maybe captured a couple of stories from clients just um, that they've had donors that found it super easy to use. Yeah, I mean, everything that Gift Cloud does, every um, every feature that we built, again, is is built specifically for Donor Perfect because we we were built as an add-on for you guys but our our focus is really on creating those digital experiences and making sure that we provide your donors with the the best most seamless um most seamless experience that they can so it, we want it to be easy to use modern um and and really create emotion right so we we want your donors to be able to go on and and feel the power of your story um in those online experiences because especially as we go online it's it's harder and harder to build those relationships and so everything we do is focused on on adding emotions to each of these features Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Emotional emotion as you wrap it around the feature set is a, is a really cool concept. Um, I, I'm actually I want to ask our audience out there right now, just as far as how many of you have recurring giving programs, uh, if you want to just drop something into the chat, uh, maybe make a comment about, you know, what has been a success for you. Um, and, and maybe that can produce some of the discussion that we have here about easing the giving for um, second time gifts and so forth, as well as recurring schedules. But Keisha, one of the things that I, in reading your bio and talking about um, the number of people that you ended up getting supporting your cause, uh, because our, our conference is all about storytelling. Do you have any secrets to share in terms of how to get 100, and, 100 million people to, to put their eyes on your, your program? Yeah, I mean, luck helps. <laughs> um, that so we actually everything that we did was storytelling. Um, so we we told the story of of two sisters who struggled with their body image and their mental health um, because of social media, and uh, and then we collaborated with actually other influencers. Um, so worked with different celebrities who were willing to kind of help out the mission and and they told their stories. Um, and everything is so much more compelling, right, when we're telling stories because we're, we're connecting with people and we're, we're building those relationships. And so we avoided all the boring stats stuff and and just got right down to to telling 
real people's stories and and that uh that took off and it was a um a really good way to to spread information about an important cause great great and you actually put your nonprofits cause and you put it on top of the give cloud framework um just was it just for this presentation presentation here or did you um have you actually been using it of late well because uh we had a lot of success with our charity, but it's it's not how you pay your bills. <laughs> um, so our, we have slowed down on Live Life Unfiltered, so we're, we're not currently working on it. Uh, we have both gone our, our own ways and uh, we are paying our bills, so which is a really kind of good end point for, uh, for the journey. But the As She Is campaign does live on, but the actual charity we have shut down. Awesome. I understand. Understand. Well, yeah, at some point, you know, it takes takes a tremendous amount of time. I think everybody that's in our audience knows uh, the investment that they have to make to keep their nonprofit going for sure. Um, and so Alice uh, has mentioned that they wanted to start a, um, a monthly giving program or current giving program at their nonprofit. And I think one of the key things while storytelling is a component to it, you know, and we can definitely cite nonprofits that will communicate um, there's usually a metric that gets applied. You know, if you give $10 a month, that helps to feed X number of people or it helps to address, you know, certain things. Um, Keisha and Sarah, I'm just curious, you know, I'll pose the question to you. You can think about it as far as the Give Cloud clients. We know that, that you've got a really strong feature set around recurring giving. Um, we've often heard that when you set up a recurring giving program, you have to make it a little bit like a club. Um, that it's not just about putting a little checkbox on the form that says, I want to give monthly, um, but you've got to start communicating either um, you get branded in a particular way. Um, can you expand on that a little bit as far as what you've seen some of your clients do in, in terms of promoting the quote unquote club of recurring giving? So I think uh, the organizations that have had the most success with that have built memberships. Um, so we do have the ability to use memberships with GiftCloud. On average, when a donor perfect organization adds on GiftCloud to their solution, we see uh, monthly giving go up by 28%. Um, so again, I and where we see the most success is the organizations that started the membership program. So you can have different levels with GiftCloud, like uh, light or bronze and gold and you're able to create this program that encourages people to to give monthly and then they could also get promo codes etc that they could use on your online store that sort of thing got it got it so adding 28 percent to your monthly giving is a huge is another huge increase like who would yeah. like to have another 28 percent in their bank account um what uh, what are some of the features that are unique, I guess, to give cloud? I think you've got some email reminders and so forth that are wrapped around the membership program. Can you talk a little bit about those? Yeah, so um, when you use our membership program, you can have the ability to have different levels. Uh, we will send out automated emails um, encouraging people to renew their membership. So if their membership is about to expire, you can set it up so that a month before they'll renew, um, they'll get an email or maybe two weeks before. Um, so you don't have to send those out manually. That would take a lot of time. Uh, and then they're able to renew right through their donor portal. And the donor portal will have a big red sign saying like, hey, your membership's about to expire um, if the their end of the year is coming up. And, and they can manage, again, their membership right from the portal. So they can go in and see uh, the benefits of it um, and, and really learn more about their program. Great, great. Well, and so one of the key things about having the donor portal is you can log in and and as a donor, I could actually change my amount right from the portal, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah. So you're able to log in. Uh, you can change your reoccurring payments. You would be able to download your tax receipts, change your billing address, um, like change your shipping address. All of this can be done from the portal and it will automatically update donor perfect, which is obviously very important. Awesome, awesome. Do you find that a lot of the nonprofits with these programs, will they encourage people to upgrade and do they do they encourage that at particular times of the year, seasonality aspects to say, hey, now's a great time to increase your monthly giving? Uh, Christmas is a, a really great time to do that um, because everyone's obviously in a, a bit more of a generous a, a generous uh, mood. So generally running a campaign right, right around the holidays is what we would encourage and see as a best practice. 
Awesome, awesome. So um, Carrie uh, shared a little bit. Uh, their online giving society is called Renewable Resources. Um, so again, putting that name over top of the, the membership group or the community um, sort of builds that sense of belonging um, that ends up happening with your recurring givers as well. Um, so I, I know that's definitely key. Um, the video that you showed at the very beginning of our session here, I think everybody's jaws kind of like dropped as to how, how impactful that, that is. And, and I want to speak a little bit about the, um, the GiveCloud website builder features. I mean, is it possible to take a video like that and, and embed it right on the homepage? I mean, would oh, yeah. you do that? <laughs> we have quite a few organizations that do that. So um, with our website builder, there's, there's quite a few different templates. And you drag and drop the templates. And then you're able to, to go in there and, and customize them for what you're looking for. And uh, embedding a video right there on your homepage, um, I think, is one of the most powerful ways to get your supporters really interested in your your mission awesome awesome and you sh you walked us through events and uh i know we're still sitting here in a virtual event this year <laughs> um and and give cloud implemented some really cool features for virtual events in the future which we certainly um we certainly hope we can step away from but but what are your thoughts in terms of hybrid and um, whether that's going to have a place uh, in the future? Um, what's your what's your gut, gut feel? I mean, I don't think anyone really knows. <laughs> but uh, generally from just kind of checking out different sources and um, kind of listening to different different people's opinions, the, it, it sounds like we will obviously be going back to in-person events, but there's always going to be a place for, for virtual events and for hybrid events. Um, and the world's going to become more aware of like the environment and, and there's obviously a, a convenience to just doing things virtual. It's, it's definitely more um, healthy for our schedules. <laughs> well, for sure, for sure. Um, and I know one of the virtual events that you had put on with your tool set early on, and you have the ability to stream video as well as take donations right on an embedded form. Um, I believe you had one client um, that uh, was it Timothy Robbins that they had used as one of the spokespeople um, that was out there. I, I don't want to put you on the spot. I mean, it's just in terms of the success of that. Um, having a spokesman, of course, is key, but uh, can you talk a little bit about that fundraising um, campaign and just how uh, virtual helped them out? Yeah, I'm, that was, Sarah, do you know much about that campaign? Um, I mean, I don't know the specifics because that was, that was organized like through the organization, but I think the key part of that is, is having, like having the speaker and being able to really, I mean, we're talking about storytelling today, but really tell the story through that whole event and have someone who is really great, a really great and powerful speaker being able to, yeah, to, to share the story. And so they did see a huge, huge success. Um, it was really, it was really fun to watch to see such an impact being made and using the the virtual, the virtual events platform on GiveCloud. Um, and you know the the virtual events platform. It has it has emojis that kind of come down the screen as people are donating in, in real time, and it's just uh, it makes for a really engaging virtual experience at a time where we were all kind of stuck at home. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's that there's that example of that touch that Give Cloud puts on all of their products to evoke emotion just out of using some technology. Um, I think what I recall maybe in talking with Josh at some points during that virtual event is is that. I suspect it was north of six digits that was raised. Um, and and the thing that I guess I would point out to our audience is, is that major donors do not always have to give by check. Um, a major donor can give if they've got one of those um, community uh, personalities that would actually draw people to your event. Um, them being a part of your event or speaking at your event can end up raising six digits as fast as them writing a check. Um, and in, in addition to that, you're also going to get donor acquisition and engagement because new people are going to be signing up to hear what they're going to be sharing. So um, that's just a, a little piece on the event aspect to it for sure. Um, the other pieces that I find really cool in terms of the Give Cloud solution for events, we've got a lot of organizations that are doing um, galas and so forth. and and you know, to some degree, the ticketing wants to be simple for a gala and it wants to be online. 
Um, can you discuss a little bit about uh, what's the best method from a check-in standpoint for a gala? I mean, because your system does much more than just, you know, charge their credit card for whatever the tickets are, right? Yeah, I mean, the QR code is a really helpful feature. Uh, so you're just going to get your QR code right on your phone if, if you bought a ticket online. And then you can go right to the door and um, pull up your QR code and you as the organization can just scan people in um, using a regular iPhone. So very quick and easy. If someone doesn't have their QR code on hand, which there will be people, <laughs> you can manually check them in and it and it um, brings you right to a report and you just click off the quiches there and then you're able to track and report on exactly who attended the event um, and and see those that, those settings, which is quite helpful. Great, great. And much like BP Forms, I think if a, if a donor makes a purchase of a ticket or makes a donation, both of those records go back into Donor Perfect as individual gift records as well, right? Exactly. And you're, again, able to, you're able to set up the integration for each specific feature of GiveCloud. So you can really customize it to make sure that data gets pushed to the right place in Donor Perfect. Awesome, awesome. Um, and so a couple of questions, and Sarah's been super diligent at answering them, but I wanted to pull some of them forward. Uh, Noah had asked whether Give Cloud does capture data for donors and contains a dashboard for analysis. Um, yes, there's certainly a degree of reports that are out there, but as well, every Give Cloud piece of data that you might have will also end up appearing um, together with all of the donor perfect data that's out there. Uh, and then uh, SOAR, mentioned uh does give cloud connect to dp forms or it's a separate entry point and it is a separate entry point and as a matter of fact just to sort of emphasize this point you can replace your entire website with a give cloud solution so that all of that great content um that that can actually be built and, and i want to bring this up because the beauty of the give cloud forms is something that is is really strong but that capability extends itself to the rest of your website if you're using the full give cloud platform just because of the way that they're able to lay out graphics and pieces that would draw donors in and keep them there um, inside of your website which i think is key um, so i think we we've got some clarity on that um, there are also, also some very unique features that GiveCloud provides, um, and one of them is a tool called Child Sponsorship, right? And, and that does not have to be exclusively used for children. I mean, um, and, and I realize that every nonprofit may have, you know, different constituencies, certainly for humane societies, as an example. Um, I used to do a lot of work with zoos, and you can actually sponsor animals um, that would be inside of the zoo. Um, where else can people use um, this sponsorship utility, and uh, and how how does it work really? If you can expand on that. Yeah. So again, sponsorships in this scenario, we do have corporate sponsorships, but we also have the ability for you to go on and, and sponsor a child, or sponsor an animal, or uh, Daryl to answer your question. Uh, classrooms would be a common like kind of third example so you could you could sponsor an entire classroom um, and the features so you're able to kind of add different uh, you can see the information about the child right from your website for example if we're talking about children and I can go in and I can see their uh, biography I can read more information about them I might check out like a video about the child or about your organization and then I can see uh, their updates. And then once I choose to sponsor the child right from my portal, um, I'm actually able to see even uh, more information about the child and I, and I can get timeline updates. So if, if my child graduates from grade one to grade two, I'll get an email letting me know um, and I'm able to go right in and continue to build my relationship with them um, by seeing all this information from my portal. And just like with a reoccurring donation, I could right there up, um, up my donation from $30 a month to $40 a month. Awesome, awesome. The, the, and one other unique piece, and, and I can go on to this, I think Josh pointed it out, that GiveCloud has been one of the longest partners that we have ever had, and they have built specifically to the Donor Perfect API, so everything flows super seamless. Um, but one of the early features that existed was uh, e-commerce. And um, e-commerce is a bit unique. It's different than taking a donation. Um, you may have inventory that you need to relieve. You may also have um, digital products, which I thought was really cool. Um, and so 
at this point, DivCloud is the, the one tool that we have that actually can give you a full e-commerce catalog, if you will. Um, can you talk a little bit about how extensive some of those product catalogs are? Uh, digital, t-shirts, whatever it may be. What, what could a nonprofit sell that would help raise money for them? I mean, you can basically sell anything. <laughs> Um, but uh, popular examples would be tote bags and, and t-shirts and sweaters and water bottles, or you could sell digital content. Uh, so one popular example would be um, one organization did videos for how to train your dog and you can pay for those videos and then you'd be able to download them right from your portal and view them or maybe webinars uh, that's popular in the kind of the educational space. And um then from my online store, you can break it into categories or catalogs. You could break all of your products into categories. I could go in and uh, and see the see the item, and then you could set up like promo codes. Uh, and then we also have upsells, which can be a really nice way to kind of increase your overall donation by a few percentage each month. Interesting. So if I want to buy, let's say the just the t-shirt, you could upsell me to a package that would include a t-shirt and a book. Yeah, exactly. So the software will know that you have the t-shirt in your cart, but it will know that you don't have the book. And so it will encourage you, Daryl, to say like, hey, Daryl, you should also buy this, this book. It's really good. Um, and then you'll add it to your cart and uh, it can all be done in one checkout experience with a donation, which is an important feature that's, that's built specifically for nonprofits and it'll allow you to check out quite seamlessly. Wow, that is super cool. And, and I think another important piece to note, when you're selling product like that, or maybe even memberships, um, fair market value is a key component to that, right? So uh, for the nonprofits that are not selling anything today, can you explain a little bit about what fair market value is and, and what you need to consider from a tax basis? Yes, <laughs> we're putting me on the spot. <laughs> um, so, sir, how how much are you able to? I would I was going to give the the easy answer as I'm not an accountant or a tax expert, <laughs> um, but we do you do have the ability to to document that and to add that in in your in your while well, you're setting up your online store and setting up your e-commerce side of things. Um, to make sure that as you're doing tax receipts, as you're uh, reporting on on this information, that you've set that up, set that up correctly. So that was my pass off answer to <laughs> to account <laughs> accountant and finance experts. All good, all good, uh, and, and and no worries there. Actually, I've um, in in working with the zoos, one of the things that they have to account for is is their membership. Um, actually, contains a certain degree of fair market value because there's a commercial value to it. And the key part for a nonprofit is, is that the donor is not allowed to recognize the commercial value as a tax deductible portion. So if you're buying something that's $50 and $25 of it is the fair market value of it, they get a tax deduction for the remaining 25. And that's something that your system handles and, and um, can populate into donor perfect as well. Very cool. Um, so, so much that you can do with, with GiveCloud, I know you've got text features and so forth, and we, we oftentimes um, tease uh, that you, um, you're sort of the Swiss Army knife or the toolbox of, of giving tools that are out there. Um, so uh, it's, it's so hard to uh, uh, keep it all reined into just one particular topic area. Uh, I know you also have some kiosks um, that are available. And are those typically used for events um, or where where would a, a nonprofit want to put a kiosk in? Yeah, so a key, we have a POS and a kiosk, um, but the kiosk is specifically like a self-service donation uh, section. So you could add this to your an event um, and maybe on the way out of the event, you can encourage people to stop by the kiosk and also make a donation. So they're able to go right up to an iPad stand and they can just uh, plug in their information. So I want to make a $100 donation. They can choose whether it's reoccurring or it's a one-time gift. They can uh, also get their cover the monthly costs and they can get a tax receipt all like generally in like 15 seconds of filling it up. Um, so a really good way to encourage people to give um, right during an event. The, the other option, Daryl, for, for events would be text to give. Uh, so we do have text to give with GiveCloud. Um, 
and and that's really popular so you can at the end of your session you could say hey guys like text this number and and give us uh if you're able to make a, a donation we'd really appreciate it and they can do that all all right from their phones receive a, a tax receipt all of that quite quickly it's it's a good it's a nice little add-on to your to your gift cloud solution Awesome, awesome. Yeah, and I think um, you you need to go to where they are, right? And so <laughs> there's some people that are totally comfortable with doing it on their mobile phone, and we, we see the stats rise constantly about that. But some people may just find that a kiosk is a little more comfortable to them, the ATMs and so forth, and, and whatever might have been, you know, something that they would use more readily than trying to, to use a mobile phone piece. Um, so Paula actually asked, does it have, does the system have the ability to calculate and deduct sales tax? With purchases so we can do like ta you can do taxing uh right through gift cloud so you'll be able to like if no matter where you're buying your product from so if someone's in ontario or if they're in uh newfoundland they're able to um to get those tax receipts properly yes great great um and i believe there's also an integration so when you buy e-commerce online is there shipping charges that can be built in and calculated? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about how that works. I mean, is it is it with just one company or? No, so uh, we integrate with a few different solutions, um, but Canada Post and the UPS. Uh, so you can set up either of those with us um, and all of that, we will help you with the setup um, when you sign on with GiftCloud, but you're able to customize whether they get um, like a flat rate fee or maybe if they'll get free shipping if they have a products over $50, that sort of thing. Got it. Got it. So, and, and that integration, basically, I, I think it just takes the address of whoever the, the donor is, the recipient of the product. And if there is a variable pricing, it will actually um, calculate whatever that would be, right? Yeah. Based exactly. on geography. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. I know we had another one that showed up in the Q&A. And so examples of nonprofits that have pivoted to the Give Cloud web builder for their entire site. So... This may be the anecdotal stories. If there's any clients that you can think of that maybe they did they come from WordPress and then they went to Give Cloud and what's that experience like for them? Yeah, so let's see my pink. Um so Tree Sisters is an organization that we work with that's built their entire solution on Give Cloud's website builder. Uh, so this is just one example. Um, but they've done a really good job in storytelling and and sharing their um, their mission with their supporters. Great, great. And just because it might be a question kind of lingering out there is, is, is there a conversion utility or do you really want to start from scratch when you build a, a whole website on, on GiveCloud and it's time for a refresh? So it's not like you don't want to take a, um, a WordPress site and say convert, right? No, you, you would use our, our templates and build those over on GiveCloud. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, no, that's actually a gorgeous looking site. Um, you know, great graphics and really pulls you in. Um, good layout. Uh, love the panels that are sliding across. So very cool. Um, and so Kelly asked, is there a comparable feature with GiveCloud like VP video? Um, not that I know of, but I don't know if uh, that's something that's on the roadmap. EP video meaning? Yeah, so that's one of our partner products that actually uh, will allow you to record a video yourself, um, either thanking a donor and then it gets sent via email, but you can also send an email of uh, the video campaigns and so forth that you do. So I suspect, you know, GiveCloud is focused a lot on the websites, but a video that you make for the website is just as capable of being included into a DP video subscription as well um, that you would then email out, I assume. Yeah, but we don't have any solution right now where you can like text videos or anything like that. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, great. Well, um, actually, I see another question just popped in here. So, oh, that was the question about DP video. Cool. Uh, well, uh, Keisha, Sarah, I, you know, we've we've talked about a number of the features that are out there in GiveCloud. Um, any others that you would identify as far as a storytelling component that have really helped your clients get the message across and across and boost their fundraising? Um, anything that I've missed touching on that's part of that tool belt? 
the other main one would be e cards. So th that's a that's a feature that like people will come to gift cloud maybe for the donor portal or the website or the events and registration, but they hear about the e cards and they're quite excited that that's part of our package. Um, so you have the ability to sell e cards. Oh, so we have tributes on our donation page, but then I could also go on on Mother's Day and I could pick out a card to send to my mom. Um, so she'll get an automatic email or she can get a letter saying like, hey, your daughter Keisha has just donated in your name and she can get like a personalized message right from me and, and they'll have a, she'll get a beautiful email um, and you can like customize the the template so it works for your organization. But that's another um, kind of feature that people get excited for because they weren't expecting it. So that, that really hinges on something, and thank you for bringing that up. I meant to, to talk about it earlier. Um, so for those people that um, want to celebrate their birthday, but instead of giving gifts, they could point people to their favorite nonprofit's gift cloud site yep. and say, hey, just give in my name, you know, as a tribute or whatever. Um, and then they'll get a card that'll recognize the gift that was given on their behalf, right? Yeah, exactly. And then you could also do peer to peer. So I could, um, I could do, I could do it that way and ask for e cards, or I could say, "Hey guys, like, it's my birthday coming up, and I don't want any gifts. Make a donation to Live Life Unfiltered, and um, this is this is my campaign, and I'm trying to raise a thousand dollars. And then you can build those really nice peer to peer campaigns where I can add in my own photos or my own video, and I I can add in my story and really share why I want to fundraise for Live Life Unfiltered, and um, and then on on it you can have like an honor roll which does create more competition and encourages people to give a bit more. Um, so there's a few kind of handy features there that work with storytelling and, uh, and increasing your overall fundraising. Yeah, yeah, that's really great. I mean, this is a perfect way of trying to generate buzz on social media, but then draw them back into a place that people can make donations. And, and somebody new that's making a donation on the behalf of somebody else is, is kind of like that crowdfunding construct. You're, yeah. you're getting one of your supporters to encourage all of their friends to give to a nonprofit that they may have known nothing about, but just because, you know, you're a friend of Keisha's, you're now going to become aware to it. And there's going to be some percentage of those that will remain um, as part of the donor pool that you can reach out to in the future. And um, that leverages so much if, for those of you that were part of the, the DP social campaign product that we talked about yesterday. Um, it's just another way that you can you can try and leverage social because those uh, social media companies are not very giving in terms of the data that they have um, as far as who's been supporting you and following you and, and all of those other things. So it's just a great way to leverage that. So awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I, I know we've talked about a lot of features here. I think we've caught all the Q&A that's out there. So we're, we're okay to just wrap up a little bit early today. Um, I know we're, we're heading towards the close of our session. Um, so I really want to thank you so much, Keisha, for sharing that and Josh for the video, Sarah as well for helping to, uh, to answer our questions. Um, next up is from liking to loving, connecting your social media audience to your mission and digital payments in a digital world. Um, so no matter what session you choose, uh, you will not miss any content because all of this is being recorded. And uh, everyone that's been a part of this session, thank you so much for sticking around. This was great fun. And uh, I'm going to try and dig up who made that early video because I think that was really cool. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Thanks, Daryl. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye.